That was the Samsung Galaxy S10 concept, and this, this is my new setup. Finally, the, the paintings above me, they're now gone. Uh, the video that you've seen yesterday, that was actually recorded about two weeks ago. So this is, there we go, my first actual video from this new recording space. It's still a work in progress, but yeah, there we go, lots of blue lighting behind me. I'm not entirely sure what I'll add in the background, so do let me know in the comments if you want to see something specific. Uh, if you think I should be adding some cool artwork, especially something that would work well with that blue light, uh, some plants, let me know what you want to see. And also the sound should be much better than before. So yeah, the long-awaited setup improvements are finally here, and I got a few more coming in the next few videos, so you'll see some more improvements over the next few videos. But speaking of improvements, let's talk about the Samsung Galaxy S10. I haven't really made a Leaks and Rumors episode on the S10 yet, so here's everything we know at the moment in terms of Samsung's 2019 flagship. There's so many things that I want to talk about in this video, so many uh, new leaks and new reports on the S10. So get all that popcorn ready, and let's take a look. Okay, so the Samsung Galaxy S8 was actually one of the biggest changes Samsung has ever made. It was Samsung's first smartphone to ditch that home button, and also featured those really, really thin bezels on the top and the bottom, and zero bezels on the side. It looked insane, and the S8 was actually my favorite smartphone of 2017 in terms of the design. Then the S9 and the S9 Plus came out earlier this year, and design-wise they looked really, really similar, almost identical to last year's models. I mean, yeah, the bezels were thinner, but the overall design remained identical. And I'm not saying that this is a bad thing, there's not much that Samsung can do in terms of the design. I mean, they haven't added the notch on, like, pretty much every single smartphone of 2018, so that's pretty cool, but what's happening in 2019? Well, there's this big Samsung Galaxy X project that Samsung has been working on for so, so many years now. I've actually done multiple videos on that, uh, but long story short, the Galaxy S10 won't be the Galaxy X. So the Galaxy X is a foldable device that unfolds into a tablet and then folds back into a regular smartphone. The Galaxy S10 would also not be Samsung's 10-year anniversary smartphone because the original Galaxy S launched only in 2010 not 20, 2009, meaning that Samsung's big 10-year anniversary phone would not be launched until the S11, essentially. That actually might be when they'll release that foldable Galaxy X uh, smartphone. Next year's S10 would be an improved S9, but since it actually bears the name of the S10, so the S10 name, it would be more than that. So uh, it seems like the code name for the S10 is Beyond, and the main idea behind the S10 seems to be an even more immersive experience than the S8 and the S9 provided. And Samsung has a few ways of achieving this. So first, we've actually had many reports that Samsung would finally be adding an in-display fingerprint reader with a Galaxy S10. Now, this is something that we were expecting to see with the S9, but unfortunately didn't happen. Uh, this is also something that is apparently being tested and worked on on the upcoming Note 9, but there's still a very, very slight chance that we will see this on the Note 9 because it might not get finished with the Note 9's release, uh, which is gonna be in August, around August, which would mean that we'll only see this in-display fingerprint reader next year on the Samsung Galaxy S10. Now, this is pretty cool, but the S10 would actually be the first phone to feature such a thing. So Vivo has already launched a phone uh, with this feature, with an in-display fingerprint reader, it's called, the phone is called the X20 Plus UD, which I know this is a really weird name, not a great one, uh, but that's actually the world's first smartphone to come with an in-display fingerprint reader, and from what I've seen, it does seem to work really, really well. And knowing how Samsung loves to give us as many options as possible uh, on their phones, as many features as possible, especially when it comes to unlocking your phone, well, there's a very strong possibility that this would be included on the S10 next year. So, for example, if you take a look at the S9, Samsung lets you unlock the phone by either using a passcode, or you can use a pattern, or you can use the iris scanner, or you can use the front-facing camera, or you can use the fingerprint reader on the back, or you can actually use both the front-facing camera and the iris scanner for an even uh, more secure and faster unlock. This is literally one of the main features of the S9. And reports are saying that this S10 fingerprint reader would be developed by both Qualcomm and Synaptics. Now, speaking of reports, Korea News uh, site uh, The Bell, uh, which up, up until now was actually a really reliable source in terms of smartphone leaks, they reported that the S10 would be unveiled in January 2019, and then the Galaxy X, which is Samsung's big foldable smartphone project that I mentioned before, that one would be unveiled in February next year which I'm really, really looking forward to. That's that's the phone that I'm looking forward to the most. I cannot, I cannot wait to see how it will look like. And more importantly, I want to see the size of that thing before and after you unfold it. Again, I've actually made quite a few videos on the Galaxy X before, so links to all these videos 
in the description. And then the bell also reports that aside from the in-display fingerprint reader, one of the other main features of the S10 would be a new 3D front-facing camera. So similar to what Apple is currently using on the iPhone 10. And by the way, this was rumored to be included with the S9, but unfortunately it was not finished on time. Reason why we only got the software tweak that allowed us to use uh, both the iris scanner and a face unlock at the same time, rather than a true 3D sensing camera. But it seems that this would be coming next year with the Samsung Galaxy S10. And this was also confirmed by the investor, uh, and they also added that Samsung has partnered with a 3D camera firm, Mantis, uh, Mantis Vision, for that 3D camera module on the S10. Okay, so an display fingerprint reader, that's pretty cool. A 3D camera module, that's also really cool. Now we have essentially two ways, two new ways of unlocking the S10. But what else? Any new interesting and unique features? Well, a few. Well, apparently there's some big changes coming to the display as well, mainly the display size or uh, the reduction in bezels, as well as some changes to the display resolution. And pretty much every single rumor is now pointing towards a slightly larger 6.3 inches display on the S10 Plus. This is coming from 6.2 inches, what we had on the S8 Plus and the S9 Plus, and then the same 5.8 inch display size on the regular S10. Now, this would make it uh, literally have the exact same display size as the Note 8 or the Note 9 which is, again, extremely likely to happen, especially since we are expecting to see some even thinner bezels on the S10. Literally the same thing that happened uh, with the S9, which did get thinner bezels from the S8. Now, speaking of the display size, there is a patent, a recent Samsung patent that surfaced on Mobile, Mobile Copen, hopefully I did pronounce that correctly, it's a German website, uh, in late March 2018. And this one actually shows a 99% screen to body ratio of smartphone. This thing looks insane. But hey, when you realize that, oh, there's no speakers, there's no front-facing camera, well, this is either an approximation of how the S10 would look like, or it's a patent, true patent for maybe the Galaxy S11 or whatever's coming out in 2020 and later. And speaking of this, we've actually had a number of reports that the S10 would be coming with a big improvement to the screen-to-body ratio from the S9. So I'm not talking about 99% screen-to-body ratio, nothing extremely unbelievable like that, but close to 93%, a screen-to-body ratio of 93%, which is what I've seen reported by most uh, inside sources. And just to give you an idea, the S9 Plus currently has an 84.2 screen to body ratio, and the iPhone 10 has actually a lower screen to body ratio than the S9 Plus at 82.2. So 93% would look something like this. So this is the Zone of Tech Galaxy S10 concept, and this has about the same screen to body ratio and design that we could see next year on the Galaxy S10, on the actual Galaxy S10. So essentially either some very, very thin bezels on both the top and the bottom, or my idea is that Samsung would remove the bottom bezel entirely and use a gesture-based navigation system, basically the same as we have on the iPhone 10, the OnePlus 5T, um, and basically Android P. And only keep the top bezel for the camera, the proximity sensor, the light sensor, and also the upcoming 3D uh, front-facing camera as well. Now, speaking of cameras in this concept, on on the back, the S10 does feature three camera modules, and that's because this is also something that has been talked a lot about, uh, a similar setup on the S10 uh, as we have on the Huawei P20. Now, we don't really know what a third module could be used for. It could be a wide-angle lens, or it could be a three times, five times, or even more zoom module, or it could even be a specialized sensor for uh, processing color, for example, or improving the low-light performance. Now, my money would actually be on a wide-angle lens. That way, you would literally have the best of both worlds. You have a zoom module as well as a wide-angle module, something that we don't really have on any other smartphone right now, basically both of them. We have the wide-angle module on um, uh, the LG G7, for example. Speaking of this, let me know in the comments which one do you actually prefer. Do you prefer having a zoom module or do you prefer having a wide-angle module? I would actually go with the zoom module because, you know, you have the panorama mo mode, so you can actually take a wide-angle shot using that, but let me know in the comments which one do you actually prefer. Now, performance-wise, the Exynos 9820 and the Snapdragon 855 are the obvious CPU choices, and when it comes to the actual difference between these processors and the current models, the main addition would be support for 5G networks. And we already know that both of them will be based on a 7 nanometer process as well. So essentially, we would be seeing noticeably lower product consumption, as well as performance gains, especially on the Snapdragon side. And finally, with that lower power consumption and that extra performance, something that Samsung might finally be doing with the S10 is literally something that I've been wanting for I don't know how many years, and that's a 4K display. And yeah, I know. Most of you will probably say, wait, Daniel, you don't actually need a 4K display on a smartphone. There's no reason to have that because you won't be able to tell the difference between a 4K display and, I don't know, 2K display. And that's true unless 
you're using it in VR. So something like a Gear VR would see some massive improvements from a 4K display, since now you can easily count the pixels on the S9's display, obviously when using the Gear VR. And the 4K display would make the Gear VR so... Literally, one of, one of my lights has died. But yeah, I, I want to finish this video before replacing the bulb. But yeah, I was talking about Gear VR. 4K display would make the Gear VR so, so, so good. And speaking of this, we haven't actually had any Gear VR release in 2018. There might be one coming with an 09, but I don't know. We haven't had any reports on that. Nothing's confirmed. So we'll most likely see a Gear VR update in 2019 with the S10's release. We haven't had any reports on this again. So this is something that I would be guessing and something that I really, really hope that's going to happen. Also, in case some of you are a bit skeptical about a 4K display on a smartphone, well, Sony has been doing this for quite a while now. The current Sony Xperia XZ2 Premium, that one already comes with a 4K display and a stunning 760 PPI panel. Unfortunately, Samsung, uh, Sony doesn't sell any first party uh, VR headsets, so you cannot really take full advantage of that. But there you go, there is already a 4K smartphone on the market right now, and Sony has been uh, basically selling a 4K smartphone for, for, I think, almost three years now. So there you go, this is how next year's Galaxy S10 is looking so far. So uh, yeah, please subscribe and hit that bell icon if you're new to the channel. I've actually got a lot more Elixir Merge episodes coming in the next few days, some really cool ones, definitely stay tuned for those. Uh, definitely give this video a like if you have enjoyed it, let me know. And also let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts on the Galaxy S10 and what changes, what do you think of the apparent changes uh, and also the new features that we would be getting with the Galaxy S10? Do you think those are enough to warrant a S10 naming scheme or not? And then finally, also let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about this setup? Well, one of my lights has died, so that's, that's not great. But yeah, let me know how the sound compared to my previous videos. Any feedback would be greatly appreciated. But yeah, this has been pretty much it. Hopefully you finished that popcorn. I'm Daniel. I'll see you guys in my next one. Sound effect, signing out. Cheers.